My name is Alexi Stukov, and I actually have a special guest from Blizzard. I have Matt Morris, the lead co-op designer, joining me uh, to talk a little bit about uh, Alexi Stukov and all the cool stuff upcoming and all this stuff. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Hello, how's it going? Good, man. How you doing? Doing all right. Yeah, so uh, the, new, the new commander, Alexi Stukov. I guess my first question would be, what made you guys choose this one over any other character in StarCraft? Uh, you know, he has been a, uh, a bit of a, a fan favorite from, uh, from a lot of stuff we have seen on the forums. Uh, a lot of comments about co-op saying, hey, can you bring stuff from Brood War, right? Uh, he is a character from Brood War, and, you know, we saw him in Heart of the Swarm as well. Uh, he's just, he's such an interesting character. Uh, Gameplay-wise, it's also really interesting for us because he's a mash of, you know, Terran mech and also the Zerg, right? So we get to really do some fun stuff here. Yeah, I actually got to experience playing him earlier today, and uh, I thought it was really cool how all the uh, all the production facilities looked like Terran, they build like Terran, but then they act like Zerg. Mm -hmm. And, like, you can build... A bunch of things all at once out of like you can build like for instance five tanks at once out of a factory yeah and then have like all of it like all of it turns into like little eggs or something around the around the facilities it's pretty cool yeah I really it, think has, it's awesome. it has that sense of like zerg it's almost like a larva right so it accumulates yeah. up and then you just pop them yeah, out real quick yeah because when i started playing i was like making scvs one at a time thinking like oh this is how i'm doing it and then i realized there's a number on the scv that's like telling you that's how many are ready in queue to be go all thrown down at once yeah I don't know if you had a chance, but did you notice that if you uh, move your structures instead of like the normal Terran flying, they lift up and they have like Zerg lakes. And yeah. They'll actually move I, around. I moved the command center and I saw that. I just like, I wanted to try it because instead of lift off, it was uproot. Yeah. And I thought it might move around like a spine crawler. Yeah, it was really cool. cool. Yeah. So, um, uh, I don't know. I guess I, I kind of want to let you take the lead here. Sure. Uh, as you know, or your audience knows now, uh, Lexi Stukov is our new co-op commander. Um, we'll be releasing him uh, before the end of the year. Uh, he is, as I said, a Brood War character. Uh, he's mashed between Terran and Zerg. Uh, what's really cool about him is that we're really embracing that fantasy of uh, infested units. You know, yeah. You saw this in campaign a lot, where you are trying to, re you know, hold back endless waves of infested units. So now you get to take on that fantasy and actually become uh, that character that sends just massive amounts of, uh, you know, infested units. So. Uh, one of the interesting things is that he's just got unlimited supply of free melee units, right? So yeah, they, yeah. they just pop out. And at the top bar, we have a kind of like a rally point. So you could drop it anywhere on the battlefield, and that'll give a signal to all the units to start moving there. So that's how you kind of control yeah. the horde. Yeah, I remember. I, I, uh, I was actually just, what the way I ended up doing it was I just hotkeyed all of my barracks and all my production facilities in the same one. And I would rally point it, mm -hmm. and it would change like the, the the destination for all the active units on the map, like the horde of all the uh, infested Terrans. Yeah. Um, I had one question about like I never got to experience it. Uh, the game ended a little too early for me because uh, I, I didn't realize this was a thing until a little later. But on the I can't remember what the building's called, but it's the one that spawns like the little melee infested Terrans. The uh, the infested civilian structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that thing stop at a level three upgrade, or does it continue to go beyond that? Uh, right now it's level three. Um, I will say everything that we've seen at BlizzCon at this point is still a work in progress. Okay. Um, what you see now is a snapshot of where it's at in development. Uh, there's still some work, more work there. So uh, we're actually really interested to see some of the feedback coming from BlizzCon to see like you know, last minute tweaks that we could do to Stukov. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think that one was really cool. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it extends the duration of all the units' lives. It, it increases the number of spawn, yeah. uh, makes them stronger, and also it increases the duration. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and it's like an automatic spawn timer, right, of yep. like every 30 seconds or something like yep. that. The other thing, I don't know if you noticed, um, we're interested on feedback on this, but the creep for Stukov spreads by itself. Course of the mission, it'll just go because the infested units, if they start running off the creep, they start moving really slow. Yeah. So this is kind of one of our counterbalances to giving you free units is okay. because... They can only really do so much damage up to the point where the creep is. So yeah, once yeah. they move off, they're going to get really slow and they can't go anything. So the I actually I had no idea. I wasn't paying attention to that at yeah, all. Yeah. So the creep will start spreading, and that allows the you know late game for these units to get across the map as well. Because that was a challenge we had. Is like you know a Stukov was feeling um, not so good in certain missions. Where it's like yeah. timers running out. Oh, Stukov's army's coming right. So they had cool. to figure out some mobility. Uh, to really push this horde forward. Yeah, and the the one the one thing I did know, uh, which is I guess it's a little bit different than like uh, standard ladder, was uh, my ally was saying how they could build on the creep. It wasn't like uh, mm -hmm. blocking their building placement, which is pretty cool. So 
Yeah, there's there's a lot of little things like that in the game and co-op. Um, one of the things we were concerned at originally was people uh, kind of griefing each other. Yeah, you know, we yeah. We were concerned that a Zerg player would just spawn a whole bunch of creeper on your ally. Like, yeah. oh, I can't build here. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, especially with like Abathur <laughs> mines or something like that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, w I just wanted to comment as well. This is one thing I guess we can talk about for a little bit because I thought it was a really interesting idea. Uh, I didn't get a chance to play it, but the mode you guys implemented as well here where it's like the endless wave co-op thing. Yeah, that's such an awesome idea. It's the uh, it's it's the special BlizzCon mutation challenge, right? Uh, it's it's technically designed so you can't beat it. You know, yeah. Maybe someone will, right? But it, the idea is how long can you last? How long yeah. can you survive? And uh, it'll be exciting tomorrow. There's gonna be a show match where some of the uh, pro players will actually compete to see how long they can stay on that map. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Is it like, uh, are there triggers in that where it just spawns stuff on the map, or is it all just actually being produced from a base? Well, so the so the way the mutators work is they're they're kind of a, a game changer, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once it turns on, uh, if it's a mutator that's spawning units, then it just will randomly, you know, any valid pathing spot, it'll create those units and kind of mm -hmm. move it forward. So it, it's not coming from like a traditional base that you'd think like in a versus AI on a competitive, but. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're cheating a little bit because we give so much power to the player, right? Yeah, yeah. Have you guys thought about doing something like uh, this? Is a, I randomly just idea right now. Um, having a mod like that where it's like endless, but like maybe every, you could, I don't know what the timer would be, but I'll just say five minutes. You mm -hmm. add in another mutation, like another mod to the game, and another mod, and another mod, and it just gets ridiculous. It ramps up, and you can have like twenty mods at once going on. That's that's exactly what the uh, oh, it, that's exactly what okay. That. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. after three minutes, we add a new mutator. Oh, that's sick. That's awesome. One. It, okay, it, it yeah. It goes up till 10. Um, internally, when we have cheats on, it's still hard to get to 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it completely random every time, or is it like it's a... It's in a set order. Okay. The, for this challenge, it's in a set okay, order. Okay, that's sick. That's, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. That would... It's like the whole the whole game just changes every time another mutator comes into play. Yeah. You know, you, you spoke a little bit about the endless mode, too. It, it's one of those ideas that we've kind of kicked around. Um, you know, we have no... Uh, plans on implementing, but it's something we talk about. We get a lot of feedback on, which is, can you give you that sense of almost like a the old heroes defense you saw in Warcraft Three with your commanders? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. How long can you last? I've Another, done, I've done those. Yeah, those yeah, like custom games. That that gets brought up a few times. Um, we'd like to. It's just we got to figure out how to implement it. The weekly mutation challenges we have is is kind of a, opens the door for us to really do something like that. Yeah, like we could drop it that week and see how well it does. Um, so it gives us a chance to really experiment with the StarCraft II game rules. If you guys ended up really liking how it goes down that path and mm -hmm. you wanted to really advance it further, would you guys ever consider doing something like maybe adding uh, more capable players in one game? Like instead of having two players against everything, maybe having up to like four players. Just like you were saying, like where it's like the bottom lane is all the real players and they yeah. have to defend against the top of the map, which is like endless hordes of stuff. Uh, Original development, we we played around. Like, why did we settle on two versus yeah. why not three v three, four v four? There were a couple things we ran into. Uh, there's obviously technical issues. Uh, the game uh, starts chugging a lot when yeah. you start getting multiple players on it. Uh, we already see this a little bit with co-op already because we send so many enemy units against the player. Okay, yeah. Uh, and the other thing was, you see it right now. We we give you a lot of power for the player, and so you could get into these moments where each commander is dropping their ultimates, yeah. and the screen looks crazy. Now, imagine there's a third person and a fourth person in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. It becomes unreadable almost, like, right? Yeah, like the uh, the special abilities of uh, Stukov himself. I got to experiment with those. Those are pretty awesome, yeah. actually. Yeah, you, you like the, the Pokalisk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the uh, the coolest thing was the the Ultralisk with the uh, the missile pack. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, was that's like, what is this? He's got it, flames on him. He's yeah, all, he's it looked cleaving. really cool. It was awesome. Um, yeah, like uh, all of his abilities, too. Even the... Uh, the infestation on like just b random buildings mm -hmm. and how it just like I didn't realize this at first I thought it was only on enemy buildings but then when we were getting attacked I was like I just like, tried it I was like let's see if I can cast it on my ally and I could yep and the broodlings just like took everything over over oh, time it was awesome it's really powerful right now yeah yeah he's very good yeah so um, I don't know if he's aware as uh, aware as well but we're also gonna get a new feature for co-op coming in 2017 we're gonna do a co-op leaderboard Okay. So the way this is going to work is that as you play a mission, you're going to get a score for that particular mission. And once you've played all the missions, you're going to have like a final score. So this will be your, your leaderboard. 
Nice. Um, and the idea is that you could look at your score, look at each missions you've done, look to ways to improve it, say, oh, that I didn't do so well in that mission, let's improve that. Um, we'll be able to sort through based on commanders, which commander is doing best on which nice. mission. It, it makes me think of like the uh, the, Do the Diablo style leaderboard where you can separate it by like Crusader, Demon Hunter, all very, that different very classes. Very similar. That's very awesome. Similar. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, it makes it really competitive then. It gives you something to like drive for. Yeah, it's one of those things I think it, it should hopefully appeal to players who are either new to the game or even hardcore. Like some of the, some of the better players are starting to feel that the game's a little easy for them. The weekly mutation challenges yeah. is what kind of pulls them back. So hopefully a leaderboard will start uh, getting them interest. So, yeah, hey, I destroy this mission, but can you do it better? Can you it, keep going better? Uh, I actually, I I have one thing I would say about that. That The idea sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. I would I would totally be a part of that. Would there be something uh, reward-based, maybe, um, in terms of, like, uh, maybe... Like if it was the the leaderboards would get reset with every ladder reset, and the people at the top like top X amount I don't know how many would be would receive something I don't know um, maybe like a special decal or yeah. something like that. something special that you have to get through playing which would make people want to play more. Sure, sure. That rewards is definitely a a, a good carrot for a lot of people for these kind of things. Uh, we we do plan on doing seasonal rolls. We don't want the the ladder to ever feel that it's uh, getting stale. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, I'd love to make sure that there's something exclusive for your participation for the top 20, 30, 40, whatever number it comes. Um, it's it's on the list, right? Like like I said, we're still in the development. We're still ironing out some stuff. So That sounds uh, awesome. It, it's a push. Yeah. I want it in there. So. That sounds <laughs> good, man. Um, so I know you probably won't be able to answer this question, but I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, do you guys have any plans uh, to announce any more Allied Commanders maybe before the end of the year or in even more in like the near future? Uh, we are, you know, going into 2017, we're going to continue to make uh, Commanders uh, as well as we're going to continue to make missions. Um, we do have a, a idea as to which Commanders we'd like to do. Uh, we've been, uh, we earlier today on the panel, we, we kind of posed the question to the audience, you know, and for everybody out there listening now, is like, who do you want to see? Yeah. Like we kind of have an idea who we want to do, uh, but ultimately we're building this content for people to come play. So yeah. we prefer to build content that you want to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, it's definitely interesting. I'm just trying to think of uh, just more ways. I think I think definitely the better thing about it would be it's it's always great to add in more ch of a choice of like variety of commanders mm -hmm. to choose. But I think the thing that the the route you guys have taken here, where you're like adding in different modes for the commanders to plan, like the endless stuff mm -hmm. and the multiple modifications, that's definitely really cool. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Uh, to make it very like fresh and interesting. And uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to like brainstorm right now and well, think of more ideas. One of the things we're doing, um, we announced today that the uh, the Rock the Cabinet contest that we've been doing for StarCraft Two for the the mod community, the arcade guys. Yeah. Uh, this year's Rock the Ca Cabinet will be centered around co-op. Okay. So this is an, uh, kind of a test bed for us to really to see uh, what can the community do to make content for this mode. Um, lots of fresh ideas? Yeah, lots of fresh ideas. It could really change up. Uh, you know, having the community contribute to this mode on a regular basis would be amazing. Uh, no promises, right? But yeah, these yeah, are yeah. the kind of things that no, I know. we've been I brainstorming and, and trying to figure out, like, how can we continue to make this ball keep moving, you know? Yeah, like, no, I grew up on uh, Brood War custom games and, like, Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3 custom games. Like, yeah. I would spend so much time just playing games like that because I would find one randomly in one day and be like, oh, this game is really fun. Yeah. And now I play it for the next entire week every day I get on. So it's awesome. I, I love the community interaction that and integration you guys always do. It's yeah. really good. No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan of that. I've been here for the company for almost 20 years now, so uh, I, I started seeing the uh, user-generated games coming out of Brood War, then yeah. Warcraft 3 and all that stuff. So uh, ultimately, it really inspired a lot of the stuff we do in campaign. Yeah. A lot of that missions come from that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I do I do definitely see a lot of, uh, like, every you know, you'll, you'll see something, and it reminds you of a game you played before where it's like, maybe it's like an escape or something like that, mm -hmm. and it's just really cool. It's some cool ideas. Cool, cool. Are you familiar with uh, the announcement of the uh, the war chests? I am not, actually. So the War Chest is something we announced today where um, we're going to have s exclusive seasonal content that players can buy into, um, which would be like rewards like portraits, decals. Uh, we're talking about uh, full-blown uh, consoles. You know, okay. So you can redo the whole console, like if you want Zerg, wow. if you want something else. right? So this is content that's going to be exclusive to these War Chests. And the proceeds, a, a healthy portion of these proceeds, will go back into uh, funding the esports uh, global initiatives. 
Awesome. So you'll get into it, and then there's like you got to participate in the game. Once you bought into it, you still get to continue to participate to earn even additional stuff. Okay, that sounds really cool. Yeah. That's very interesting. Guys, get those war chests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, that sounds really cool. You guys have definitely a lot of cool stuff on the horizon. It all, it all sounds awesome. Yeah, we're, we're, we're no short of uh, you know ideas we'd like to do. For us, it's time. <laughs> exactly. I, I totally understand. Like, uh, I always had an idea of like what it would be like to you know when someone even if it's a really good idea someone puts out an idea maybe this idea would take like a year to integrate into doing stuff and then you it, know it other depends. things change it depends it uh, uh, the teams all work so closely together so when we start thinking of a big feature you know one of the first things we'll do we'll say you know who is this impacting which departments engineers yeah. artists and things like that and so producers will get us in a room we'll talk it out and they'll go back and they'll say this is how long that'll take and we're like, okay, well, when can you start? Well, this is what we already have to do. Yeah. So it's going to go there, right? <laughs> so uh, depending on what's in front of that is ultimately about how fast this stuff comes out. Yeah, and then uh, also, like, just the fact that it might, like, delay things you're already working on and all that kind of stuff. And you want to, like, make sure, like, nothing else gets really put on the back burner for too long. Yep. Every Don't once in a while you find an idea, we'll come across something that says, oh, that's going straight to the top. Right? Yeah. Like, it'll jump everything else because we're like, we got to get this out. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think with StarCraft... Uh, just like a general idea of, as a player, what I would want. Mm -hmm. I would totally say, like, I like the way multiplayer is going. I like the uh, the occasional, like, change here and there. Like how the new patch is coming up with multiplayer. I love the changes coming in. Uh, the, 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 the Just switch the game up. It makes it feel fresh. It doesn't have, like, a stale metagame and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think the ideas you guys are doing with, like, the co-op and really just adding more and more to it is definitely a great route to go because it... I actually a lot of times will log on and be like, you know what, I really don't feel like playing ladder right now, but I'm going to play co-op instead. And That's just awesome. have a great time. Yeah, you know, I've run into a lot of people who are, are really hardcore multiplayer guys, and they'd say the exact same thing. Where yeah. they're, they're like, they just want to have that relaxing moment, right? Yeah. They don't have to put a lot of stress into it. Uh, they, they could just kind of almost play one-handed, yeah. you know, and <laughs> just enjoy it. It's, it's almost like StarCraft II's version of the old StarCraft One comp stomp. Yeah. Right? It's a very similar feel. It's like, yeah, 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 it's not that challenging, but you go on. And yeah, you, exactly. It's fun. That's the cool thing. Like, if you do a standard mission, it feels just like that. Mm -hmm. But then when you start getting the more challenging parts, you're like, oh, we have all these m mutators and all this stuff. Oh, we yeah. have to dodge this and that. Yeah, or if you're looking here. for the challenge, we yeah, have exactly. It, for you. it has like a big, a big range of uh, skill level that yep. it can cater to a lot of people. Yeah, I like it. It's good. No, it's, it, it's we like I said, we we've, we've been pleasantly surprised uh, how well it's done, and and really it was when we did the weekly mutation challenges and the mastery levels is when we actually started seeing the number of games being played per day at yeah. times starting to exceed what you see in multiplayer, which is, you know, it made our brains pop. We're like, we didn't think that would ever happen. Yeah, I uh, I do. I It's it's really good, man. It's it's also, it's like, I feel like it's feeding off of ideas from other games in a way. Like how I, I just, uh, just random example here. Like I feel like the Hearts, like Hearthstone for me was really fun in the beginning. And then I, you know, got more interested in other games. Like I went back to StarCraft a little bit. And let's say like the... Uh, the brawls come out, and I'm like, oh yeah, the brawls sound sick, and then I get really into them, and I, you know, I check them out for a while, and then I go back to StarCraft again. I feel like co-op is kind of the uh, initially was like the same thing where I got into it right away a little bit, and then I kind of shied away, but then the mutations came out, and it definitely pulled me back in. Now I'm like, okay, this is actually more of like the challenging part of it, because I love, I, I sometimes I want to relax and just have fun, mm -hmm. but I love having that challenge where you're like, I have to beat this, I want to beat this this week, and I have to do it. Yeah, so I really like it a lot. Yeah, those are those have been uh, a lot of fun for the, even the designers. The yeah. guys are coming up with some of those ideas. It's, it's, I, uh, we were asked a question earlier, like, uh, at what point are you guys going to start recycling? I'm like, do we have to? Yeah. Like, we got a whole bunch of ideas that are exactly. not in yet. Exactly. Well, like, it's, you can have new ideas easily, but I feel like you guys have so much at your disposal, too, just with, like, let's say World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Just, like, look at every single boss fight in World of Warcraft, and you could have some unique mods on different ones. You'd be like, oh, that's a great idea. Yep. Let's somehow figure, like, implement this into StarCraft in a certain way. It's yeah. really good. One of the cool things, one of the uh, – uh, Aaron Kirkpatrick, one of the designers on the team, um, he was pushing for us to do these seasonal, like, holiday events. So, like, this week has been the Halloween event. Yeah. Right? And so – we're like, oh, we really like this. So, so we're going to start pushing forward and trying to start hitting all these different holidays to, to just make it kind of feel fun and fresh. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's like time to kill St. Nick. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got, we, got one, we got a holiday one coming. <laughs> that's cool, yeah. That sounds really fun. Um, I don't know. Uh, anything else on the co-op stuff you'd uh, want to touch on? Sure. We have a, um, 
we have a new co-op mission coming out as well. Uh, should be coming out just weeks after this uh, BlizzCon. It's called uh, Minor Evacuation. Okay. Uh, Minor Evacuation is also going to introduce a new character named Deborah Green. Okay. She is a Kalmorian uh, guildmaster, and so she needs help evacuating civilian structures, uh, shuttles from this infested planet. And so what's kind of cool about this map is one of the feedbacks we've gotten about our missions is trying to get more uh, replayability out of them. So this mission has nine shuttles on them, but only seven of them are ever active, and it's a different seven. I like that. that. So every time you roll, it's going to be a different, your objective points are moving. Yeah. Um, they'll start uh, preparing to evacuate, and the moment that happens, that all the infested units come out and try to destroy it. So players are going to have to go out there and clear out the area and stay there until the shuttle has left, right? So it's a bit of siege and then defend for a while until it takes off. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's uh, it's really interesting. Um, with just uh, the RNG aspect to it, where if it's not always the same, you don't always have the same path you always take. Yeah. And uh, again, I'm like brainstorming here now. I, I do this a lot when I talk about new <laughs> ideas. Uh, one thing I think would actually be really cool. I don't know if you guys ever would really want to do something like this because of it would kind of goes against the model you guys have for your like the way you level an ally commander. Okay. But if you, I feel like if it was something Warcraft 3 esque where a mission started and your commander was like let's say it was a, a playable commander on the field mm -hmm. and it always started at level 1 and it'd be like similar to like creeping in, in Warcraft 3 where you would go out level them up get maybe items or something sure to like lots of RNG that could happen and then it would like play an impact on like how you had to actually like want to really complete the mission like maybe you found something that was good for damage or mana regeneration or I don't know something yeah, yeah. like that uh, those are those are all really cool ideas um I mean, Abathur kind of touches on a little bit with his uh, biomass, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. As you start destroying units, that's your experience, so to speak, on the on the floor that you yeah. got to go. Yeah, they like up. mega evolve, and they keep like mini evolving throughout the time with their stats. Yeah, I mean, we're we're always pulling uh, ideas from our previous games like that, and even from like I said, they are earlier the arcade, right? So yeah, uh, we'd love to do stuff like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's always yeah. very fun, man. It's good. Uh, one other mission. Uh, been really popular something that people talk about all the time on the forums for us is i don't know if you remember the map left to die it was the uh our version of a co-op map after wings of liberty it was a blizzard published oh uh, it, no, it was the one where uh it was like an infestation everywhere and you had to like the you were like a cycle. marine or something yeah and you had to go out and you, you did level right in that mm -hmm. game yeah it was i play games like that it's like resident evil it feels like resident evil basically where you're just like going through an undead city mm -hmm. or something so we're, we're making that into the co-op map Okay. So that's our map that's coming out after minor evacuation. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna switch the name and call it Dead of Night. But it's it's ultimately the same thing where you and the you and your ally are in the middle of the map, and at nighttime, just this endless swarm of infestors try to overrun you. Okay. Right? And then once the day breaks, it destroys all the evil infestation, and then you got to go oh, up yeah. and cleanse it. It's, that, th it's th for the uh, Wings of Liberty Hanson. Yeah, actually. that was the one where you could get the skank portrait, right? I think? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I play that mission quite a bit. Yeah, uh, it's, it's one of the uh, most requested uh, uh, maps that we get from the forums. Everyone's always asking, we want left to die, we want left okay, to die. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Right, everybody. Woo, that's yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I, uh, it's, it's all good. I, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just thinking about it. I'm trying to brainstorm all these new ideas now. It's very exciting stuff. Did you, uh, have you played any of the uh, Nova, uh, Nova Covert I have, missions? I have played those, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, as you know, the, the third installment's coming out pretty shortly here, yeah. so. Uh, I, that's always good. That's always. Uh, I'm like a really. I have like a soft spot for campaign. Like I, my stream knows me mainly from like playing multiplayer and playing ladder games, just grinding games all the time. But every time a new expansion comes out or like just new single player campaign co content comes out, I will always just like be like, all right, guys, we're taking a day. We're only playing this now. Oh, nice. Got to got to experience it. And I, uh, I, I, I really have like the uh, the Nova Commander or the the, the Nova the, the, mission. The, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, man. Not confusing at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh man. So stream. I, I guess I can uh, maybe go to the stream here and see if they have any questions sure. as well. Let's do it. Uh, have you guys? Anyone who's been here, you know, for the last few minutes or maybe the whole conversation? Because I know some of you guys probably have tuned in throughout this. Anyone have any questions for uh, Matt over here? Um, I know there's going to be a little bit of stream delay, so uh, we'll just, I guess. We'll wait for it. Oh, here we go. We have a question. Yeah, see right there. I like left to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big Davies a supporter. Could you ask if they had any further thought on Brood War missions getting to co-op since they mentioned a lot of new map stuff at the panel? Um, you know, we we have just recently started. You know, uh, these missions, you know, strangely enough, take a long time to to make. 
right? So we got the minor evacuation coming out. It's, it's pretty much in the can. We're ready just to ship it. We're, we're focused on left to die. But while we're doing this, we're starting to look at our next missions. So uh, that particular feedback has come up. So I asked one of the designers, I said, let's, let's start looking through. Let's see what is particular mission there that would probably work that we could kind of convert over. So um, no promises at this point, but we're, we're definitely investigating. That's cool. That sounds good. Uh, <laughs> oh, lots of trolls as well. <laughs> Try, trying to sift through the troll comments and the actual comments. Um, I Okay, one guy says, it would be interesting to uh, hear their reasoning behind no mission packs in 2017. They seem to be really well received. Yeah, you know, uh, the mission packs have done pretty well. Uh, we have no plans on uh, making any of, any more, which kind of sounds like, hey, they're so good. Why aren't you making more of them? Uh, really what's happened is that because co-op has really taken off uh, unexpectedly across the company, everyone's just going, oh, my gosh, let's continue to move this forward. Um, the guys that work on the campaign are continue to help out throughout the company, right? So in StarCraft II, we're, they're helping out building the missions, right? So just the, the decision came down as let's, let's focus on co-op. This is an area that's really generating a lot of people because we see that crossover. We see single-player campaign players play co-op, and we've seen multiplayer guys come over. So yeah. uh, we, we think this is an area that has, has really yet to hit its limit, so we really want to push that yeah, forward. Yeah, to be honest, I uh, I totally agree with that decision, too, <laughs> to uh, focus more on the co-op, because I feel like campaign is fun, mm -hmm. but campaign, I feel like, has minor replayability, in my opinion. Like, if I played through the story once, I, I had a great time, yep. but now I know the story, I might want to play through it again and, like, finish getting my achievements or something, but usually I'll probably call it there, and maybe, like, one day I'll have that nostalgic, like, and urge to be like, yeah. I want to do it again, maybe yep. a few years later, but for the most part, I'll probably be done. But the co-op stuff, you can just replay that over and over, especially if you have all these uh, this RNG that could happen where it's like new mods, new everything. Yep, new game modes and all that yeah. stuff. I think replayability is definitely more like where it's at. And yep. uh, it makes you want to like just be addicted to the game and spend hours and hours on it. It's, it's fun. I, I don't know how many people have come up to me and says, you know what, I'm a hardcore multiplayer guy. Yeah. Your stuff is fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They really get into it, so it's awesome. Yeah. Um... Are there a lot of assets for co-op also used for like vo for voice packs? If so, can we expect new voice packs based around co-op commanders? Um, well, we uh, when we originally announced or uh, launched the announcers, they were all exclusive for the multiplayer. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe we had fixed that in a patch, and players can use the announcer packs now in co-op. Um, and I would say that all the co-op commanders that we have uh, had come in, the voice actors, we kind of looked down the road and we actually had them recording this stuff. So uh, as far as how we're going to release which announcer packs are coming out next, um, I'm unsure, but uh, it, it always been a goal of mine to make sure that each commander that shows up, let's record them. Let's get all the voices. Okay, good. Um, okay, I, I know, I'll just ask it, because this is actually a really fun question, even though I, I don't expect an answer. Uh, what is the future of Blizzard RTS games, Warcraft 4 or StarCraft 3? Starcraft to co-op. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I figured. Uh, I I I I gotta say I uh, I like the old model you guys used with you know like okay we got a new game coming out it's awesome get excited guys mm -hmm. like we got uh, Warcraft three coming out or whatever but I really think it's like very uh, respectable or like commendable to just say that you guys dedicate so much of your resources to like upkeeping the game and just providing new content within the game so the game itself never just like uh, just becomes you know less interesting over time because you're like oh I've already been there done that yeah, yeah. I'm gonna move on it's I, always something fresh yeah I, I've I've always really loved the fact that the you know from the top level at Blizzard it, it's been a, a goal for the company to continue to support the game long after it's launched right yeah um, and I, I think that's amazing I think that's what uh, the fans really identify with as well you know because there's a lot of value out there you're competing against you know somebody who wants to buy a game why buy a Blizzard game over another game right. Yeah. Um, I like to think that adds value to it. Like people know that when you come into a Blizzard game, this is a game you could put down on your shelf while you could come back and you could continue yeah. to play and it's being fully supported. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, uh, any chance in making new content like badges, announcers, etc., uh, able to be achieved as well as bot? I'm cheap. Yeah, so the war chests will unlock that stuff as well. So there'll be exclusive content for that war chest season. So there'll be seasonal uh, each year. And you'll get some right up front. And then there'll be 
playing the game, they'll will uh, will have uh, it's almost like an achievement, so to speak. But we'll say, hey, go play X number of games here. Go play. You know, it's it's almost experience, right? So by playing multiplayer, you're earning experience to unlock more content. If you play co-op, you can play co-op and you continue to move that bar forward, and so you will earn more portraits and decals, exclusive to that one series, uh, that season buy-in. Okay, I like that a lot. Uh, just to extend that question a little bit further, do you guys have uh, uh, any ideas to like maybe make something like a, a war chest purchase, like instead of having experience, also maybe making it like achievement based an un for an unlock of one? Like if you do something very well and you like actually made the achievement, you just get like a bonus uh, loot bag or war chest. That's a good idea. Right, like so, uh, this is still in development. Uh, we we haven't sailed that ship, so um, the guys working on this, I, I think that's a pretty cool feedback. Like, you know, it feels like, like you said, it's a bonus. You, you've got yeah. your content, you've earned the content, but you did something so well, you get a bonus content. Yeah. Like, I yeah, think that's a pretty cool. good idea. Um, all right, just to clarify for everyone, uh, one guy says, when is War Chest coming? Uh, early 2017. Okay. Uh, yeah, man, it's good. Uh, I don't know. Chat, come on, ask me some more questions. <laughs> yeah, it's all really exciting, man. I, I just got to say one more time to how, like, I actually think that uh, the new commander, Alexei Stukov, is probably going to become my new favorite commander. Yeah. I I feel like I've had that feeling with every one of them that has come out recently. I'm like, oh, yeah, Alarak, he's my favorite. Yeah. Oh, no, Nova's my favorite. <laughs> you know what, Alarak, for me, Right off the bat was one of my favorites. Yeah. And then I was like, Nova's coming around. I'm like, but I like playing Alrak. Yeah. Right? And then I'm like, okay, I got to I gotta do my thing. I'm going to level Nova, get her back up to 15. Yeah. Um, now I can't stop playing her. I'm like back into my mastery levels, grinding out my mastery yeah. levels. And I'm finding myself picking Nova going into the weekly mutation challenge as well. Yeah, man. So. It's, uh, they all have like a different feel. And it's all, it, like, it suits lots of different play styles. Yep. And I feel like that's why it's so fresh. Because some play styles are, could be more like... Uh, like for instance, like this is something obvious here. Nova is more like tactical. You like you just land units in the fight. Yep. Like, you don't have a you don't have a huge army, but you have very strong few units. And then you could have something more like Abathur, where I feel, in my opinion, uh, I feel like Abathur is more like macro style, where mm -hmm. you just want to like get your army huge and bulky with all those little like power ups you get. He's like he's like a snowball at this point. Yeah, like, yeah Once yeah. he gets going, he just you can't stop. Abathur. Exactly. It's it, it definitely caters. Like some days I might you know be in the mood to play like that, where I just want to like yep. have this death ball, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go with some Abathur. <laughs> one of one of the cool things that guys working on the weekly mutation challenge is. Uh, Gears have shifted a little bit. You know, we had our, our philosophy and what we want to do with this. And one of the things we're doing now is uh, we're okay with it being a little bit harder. Because what we're finding now is that this has become this interesting puzzle. Yeah. Each week is a new puzzle. And so we've enjoyed seeing the fans trying to figure out what combination of commanders working together uh, fit that. So some weeks your commander is really good, all of a sudden struggles a little bit. So yeah. maybe you might have to try another commander. Right? You actually, I just got an idea uh, talking about that just now. Uh, I just... I was thinking, what if, uh, for like the weekly mutation or something like that, what if there was like a instead of brutal or something like, what if you could put like a like the Inferno Diablo style? Yeah, like yeah, just like a like a, a like a, a, a you tweak your number or something like that to where you could like make it this much harder, and uh, I don't know how, what the range would be, but like you, you could be very basic, like just one thing like extra hard, or you could be like I want it to be 50% harder or like 25% harder. But I feel like that right there would be a good way to implement like an achievement or like a bonus, like oh, yeah. war chest. Yeah, I mean, some of the early uh, mutators that we put out, they were basically a buff for the enemy. Yeah. Um, we're, we're by no means not wanting to do those. But one of the things that we found that with the fans is they like the real visual impact. Like they visually see something very different on the battlefield. So uh, there was a, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was like all of a sudden the enemy is doing, you know, twice as much damage and attack speed is twice as much. Yeah. Um, and it, People are just like, ah, oh, that's okay. How, I got a question for that really quick. Okay. How hard would it be if, uh, like, coding-wise, for if, if you were have, if to have a mod that says, like, 20% more damage and 20% more health, what if you were to make the graphic of the unit also, like, bulkier or bigger? Just, like, increase the size. Yeah, we do that a lot. Like, uh, I want to think it's Avenger, so every time a unit is killed, uh, the units by them get buffed. Yeah. And those guys get bigger and yeah, bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's. Th I feel yeah. like that would be one way to, like, just, like, if you had, let's say, a mod that was, like, Units are all 
like 100 percent stronger it's like something super hard yeah and i like i like where you're going with that yeah. as like a philosophy is like can we introduce a challenge one week that's basically something that's just painfully hard to beat yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right? exactly I, I would i would love it this this is me like just being like a hardcore gamer if i sat down and i played something and i got destroyed the first day and i'm like all right well let me think about that when i go to bed tonight and i'm gonna try and theory craft on how i can beat it the yeah, next day yeah. and it takes me like five days to beat it or something and it was so hard that like only a handful of people have beaten it, but a lot of people have attempted to beat it, and like, you feel like you've really accomplished something by the before the week is over because you've actually conquered that. I, I think one of the, um, I, I guess I would just say the feather in the hat kind of moment for that is uh, some of the things we want to do with co-op as well is is really uh, make the player card better, right? Like, the, we like the player card that we have in StarCraft, but there's not a lot of representation of co-op there. Yeah. So if you have that week where you finally beat it after you know so long. And you want to make sure that people know that you did that, right? So those are, we yeah. want to get the hard, but we also want to make sure that players could kind of feel like, oh, I did it. Yeah. You know, they could get on the chat room and say, hey, look at my emoji con. Nobody else got this because <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I did that'd this, That'd be right? cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I, 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 I like it. It all sounds so exciting. It all sounds really good. Um, I'm looking, I, all I can say is I'm looking forward to all, all the stuff coming in. Awesome. It's really good. Uh, Alexei Stukov is a badass. Yeah, he's really <laughs> cool. He's, he's really creepy in a fun way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's good, man. All right, uh, I guess anything else? Uh, uh, I, I'm good, man. You got good? any questions for me? That's I don't know. I, I feel like I had a great conversation. Awesome. It was really good to know, like, just learn about all this stuff and just throw some ideas out there I had. Awesome. It's a good day. You uh, good time at BlizzCon so far? Yeah, great. I... Uh, I got. I always the best part of BlizzCon for me is always the opening ceremony, just yeah. because it's always the most hype. Like it sets the whole weekend on pace, basically. Me too. I, I don't, unless I force myself to go see what it is. Like I, I like having that surprise as well. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that team is doing. That's that? actually something I wouldn't even think of. I would think if I worked at Blizzard, I would probably just feel spoiled all the time to like know everything. It's it's hard. You think you know everything, and then all of a sudden the team does something. You're like, oh, I didn't know that, right? So yeah, you, yeah. you become as an employee, you become a fanboy too, which yeah. is really cool. I think that's 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 the best way to keep it. That's yeah. like this. Yeah, it's good. And uh, so far, I I watched a little bit of the StarCraft tournament. Yeah. Uh, poor Need, man. Yeah. <laughs> poor American Hope. Yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't get. I wasn't in the theater. That I had it on my phone. I was in an interview. I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I got to play a little bit of the co-op. Like I was saying, I got to try Alexei Stukov, and uh, really just been walking around a lot, ex just trying cool. to take in everything. So cool. much stuff to see here. When you get a chance, go back down and try the uh, the BlizzCon challenge. That's the one where the mutators continue. Yeah, that's what I wanted to try. Yeah. I was gonna try that next. Uh, next time I go back there. This morning there was two guys uh, on brutal difficulty, and they were on their sixth try, and they got a little bit better each time. And I, I think their final score was like they did it 16 minutes. They lasted 16 minutes on yeah. brutal. Yeah, that sounds so good. That'll be your benchmark. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. Well, uh, thank you for coming on the stream. Right, thank you for having me. Man. Yeah, I totally appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye, everyone. There goes Matt Morris, guys. The uh, lead lead co-op content producer of uh, StarCraft 2. Thank you. All right, everyone. Everyone. How did I do? Was I awkward? I, ho I, I don't do interviews. I'm not the interviewer. Uh, I feel like it. I feel like it went okay. <laughs> All right, guys, can we see some Stukov? I can't actually show.